excited to have you here. I, uh, when I'm cooking things, I almost always consult you and your book. Well, your was How to Cook Everything your first book? No, but it, it was, was not. my first big book. It was a big book. It is a big book, and it's a great book because you literally... I, I, I test myself sometimes. I go, I wonder if this will be in there, and it's always in there. That was kind of the thought, and the idea was... The, the way to shop is really... And the way to cook is to go buy what looks good. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't know how to do it, how to cook everything tells you how right. to do it. Right. So. And after you write a book called How to Cook Everything, <laughs> how do you then write another book? Because well, I... <laughs> it seems like everything covers it all, you know? Yeah, you would think so. But titles tend to be hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. So whereas this one is called, may I? Yes, yes. This Dinner one is for a... everyone. Right. There might be some people it doesn't include. Right, yeah, there's not really <laughs> Dinner for everyone. I got gotcha. you. Who taught you how to cook? I was really self-taught. I, um, I went to college in Massachusetts. I grew up in New York, and there was a lot of food around. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to college in Massachusetts, and suddenly it was a food desert in the worst possible sense. Was it really? Um, yeah, it was, this was in the 60s. So, okay. So I, I uh, left the dining halls. I got an apartment, and I just decided I was going to learn how to cook, and I did. And I taught myself from books and... One thing led to another, and soon I was writing. In college, it. would you cook for your friends or your, your classmates? In college, I really didn't have any friends, oh. so there was that. <laughs> but after I graduated college, I lived with a bunch of other people, and I did, I did cook for other people. And then it became... Um, it was in the 70s, it was really a thing to like cook all weekend and invite your friends over and say, I just did this amazing meal that took me eight hours. And you don't it, think you know, it's that way anymore, that. huh? I mean, I think some people would do that, and mm -hmm. a third of Dinner for Everyone is that kind of project cooking. It's right. like, I want to do something that's going to blow my guests' minds. Right. Um, and I'm hoping people do that as a hobby. I know some people do, but, you know, most people at this point are like, I got to get dinner on the table. And that's sort of the fast aspect. Right. Of you this. were at one point a food critic. You went to restaurants undercover, I assume? Was yeah. under, I started as a restaurant reviewer um, in New Haven, Connecticut, um, and there were so few good restaurants that after, I don't know, six or eight or something like that, I went to this restaurant and I was like, I could make this food so much better. So I <laughs> converted the restaurant review column to a cooking column. Oh, really? Yeah, sneakily, without asking anybody's permission. I see. So you it. took their recipes and told and explained well, got, how they could I went to this place and had pasta with pesto, and it's terrible, so I wrote <laughs> that. And then I said, here's how you make pasta with pesto. And then I started writing recipes. Interesting. So it was a constructive criticism in a way. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> a rare... It was the nicest spin you could possibly put on And it. how long did you do that? Did you run out of restaurants in New Haven? Yeah, I did. You and know. then I became restaurant viewer for Connecticut Magazine. And I reviewed restaurants on and off until about 10 years. I don't... It's not a, it's not a fun... I, for me, it wasn't really a fun thing. The idea of, like, helping people learn how to cook... Because cooking and... You know, relating well to food is so important. That's that's much more valuable. There's to me almost than a nothing more thing. important, as far as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I know some people really don't care about food and they don't take an interest in it, but we do it at least three times a day, and it's something that if you're gonna do it anyway, you might as well enjoy it. Well, so this, in a way, this this, this tracks my career because I did the recipe thing, and obviously I still do it for many years, and then I thought. There's so much more to talk about about mm -hmm. food. It touches on every important issue of our time, and it touches on it in ways that encourage us to do things better. Um, and, so, and I think it is important to talk about that stuff and to think about stuff. Food, food's important when you're talking about climate change. It's important when you're talking about equality, racism, labor, immigration. All right, the chicken. issues of our time. Chicken. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> and all of those things all are important. All of those things. And, you, and that is something that you focus on. Well, you wrote your column for the New York Times, and then you start writing opinions about um, food and kind of big thoughts about food and the way... What can we do? Would the smartest thing for us to do as a society would be to stop eating altogether? <laughs> Just to not eat anymore? You know, honestly, the smartest thing for us to do as a society would be to make it so that we're encouraging our children to eat well. That, mm -hmm. would be the, that would be the start of things that would affect... Because you can't produce good food without starting to treat 
workers right, without treating the land right, without treating laborers, uh, laborers right, sorry, animals right, workers, mm -hmm. land, animals. And if you want to feed children well, all of those things have to fall in place. You can't be producing junk food, encouraging kids to drink soda, and have a decent food system. Kids should not drink soda. <laughs> OK, this is good news. For, this is big for me to. This is, I if will you say thought that, it was like a really good thing. I thought soda kids. was good soda for Soda was you. like a natural food. Yes, yeah, right. soda. It's from the <laughs> earth. But the, the idea, though, of getting kids to eat in a healthy way is very difficult for a lot of parents. For instance, my daughter, who's four years old, she will not eat uh, anything. Like, you know, I try to, sometimes I'll sneak healthy things into her pasta or whatever, but she just wants the most basic food items. She just wants, like, like macaroni with butter on it and, you know, that kind of thing. Which is fine. I mean, that is food, after all. I assume you're not force-feeding her. Yes, I am. We soda. Do. Yeah, you <laughs> <like> a... <laughs> But here's the thing. I mean, with all due respect, your kid's going to grow up fine. Oh. I mean, you have a, oh, a, good. a modest amount of privilege, and, and your kid will be grown up, encouraged to eat well, uh -huh. nurtured by her parents, taught well in good schools, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And not everybody has those advantages. And a lot of people, a lot of children, learn how to eat based on what they're told on television and online. And that is almost completely unregulated. And so generation after generation, we all know how difficult it is to change our diets. We right. all know that we should eat better than we do eat, for the most part. But as kids, we're encouraged to eat badly. And, mm -hmm. and parents only can have so much control in a world where most of our information does not come from our parents. It comes right. from random people who are trying to get us to buy stuff, right? Yeah. Not and, necessarily stuff that's good for us. And they know what triggers us. And they know if they give you a toy along with the food that you will be more excited about eating the food. Right. I know I get excited about a little <laughs> toy in my food. Well, uh, well, thank you for being here. This is a, a book. It's called Dinner for Everyone. And you can see 100 iconic dishes made three ways. Easy, vegan, or perfect for company, which it could be perfect for company whether it's easy or vegan just alone, right? Yes. Well, thank you for being here. It's great. I follow you on Twitter and all that stuff. I Mark Bittman, everybody. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is the Internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.